Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Cruzando Consejos, the heart to heart with college students for our student, for our 11th grade Puentistas. Um, we wanted to first welcome you um, to a discussion about the different opportunities in, in your higher education paths as you're considering and getting prepared for your senior year and the big decision of what's my next step in terms of my educational pathway. Um, cruzando, which means crossing. Um, the concept of cruzando was because we're thinking in, of you in terms of supporting your crossover to, um, to colleges and universities. And, uh, and the consejos, which is, you know, just the wisdom that some of the students that are puentistas that have already gone into uh, other levels of higher education will be sharing with you. Um, so first of all, I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Steve Gonzalez, who's uh, been the the person that has um, the mastermind, the uh, person that has really put all the energy into making this happen for all of us and to all of our puentistas that will be sharing their stories with you. Um, I also want to acknowledge all of our teachers and, and counselors at our Puente sites that have really um, provided uh, a space for, for you to have um, this information and to be supportive of, of the Cruzando. Um, they're always the heart and soul of our programs at our school site. So I want to acknowledge their, their good work and, uh, and, and their continued support of everything that we do through the statewide office. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you for the uh, schools that are attending. I see your names out there. If you could put in the chat, please, the name of your school and how many juniors are attending right now that would be wonderful and what will we'll, we'll, uh we'll recognize you here so i see uh centennial i see muir i see uh marshall i see pioneer i see desert mirage i see castro valley and Brian, not quite sure what your school. So once again, please chat the name of your school and how many people are with you. So we really appreciate that. Um, so um, here we go. Any problems, any technical problems that we have? What did you say, Ms. Contola? We're gonna start the video in just a second. Did you chat something here? Okay. Okay. So here we go. We're going to start the first video. Um, Hi, my name is Rosabra Lacio. Oh, and or I says the chat. Is, I'm sorry. The chat is disabled. Did we, did we get the words of chat disabled, Anna? I'm sorry. Okay. They can type in the Q&A. Thank you. Okay. Tap in the Q&A. So we'll start the videos. We have three videos, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, four videos from, uh, from community college, from private school, from uh, a UC and a Cal State. And then afterwards, we'll do a quick Q&A. So uh, juniors out there, and, 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 and um, so once again, put it in the Q&A, the, the school that you have and the number, and the juniors out there, if you could take notes and you have questions, we're gonna have a live panel section that we're going to ask the students questions uh, that are with you. So we're going to start off with our College of the Sequoias. Go ahead. Here at the Community College of College of the Sequoias, I am also a psychology major. I should be a psychology major because I wanted to know why I felt the way I felt and why I chose to react a certain way with my mood, with the just like after what happened, the aftermath of my moods, I guess. And I want to know more about just the way, the way I felt and why I chose certain reactions and why I, why my family reacted certain ways with my certain, with certain moods and everything. And I also wanted to want to be a school psychologist. So I wanted to pursue, a, to pursue psychology, but also be in touch with kids because I love kids and I want to be in a school setting, but not necessarily be a teacher. So I thought being a school psychologist was a great fit. So my three tips to succeed in community college are to go to the office hours because you're gonna wanna keep in touch with the professor and also have them know your name 
and it'll just be an easier experience for you but in my personal case it was and number two is to go to club rush and to go to clubs and have that club experience just because you never know who you're going to be friends with and you never know how the club is going to impact you in a personal way and it's just going to be so much fun and it's going to make the college life more ex the college experience better um especially at community college because you're going to see a lot of old friends that you saw in high school if you do go to a community college in your area and it's just gonna be nice to know that you have someone to have your back when things get tough and the last experience is so my last step is going to be to stay on top of the homework just because it's going to make your classes a lot easier and it's going to be relieving to know that you have the homework done for the class because sometimes the homework does help a lot of the time the homework does help with the classwork and just to understand the material better so it's definitely going to be a big plus if you do the homework and if you stay on top of it instead of procrastinating because i know it is a lot harder to do homework in college but it will definitely make class go by. So I did apply to transfer for fall of 2023 and I applied to eight universities, four of them being UCs, which are UCLA, UC Merced, UC Riverside, and UC Santa Barbara. I also applied to four CSUs, which are Fresno, Fullerton, Cal Poly Pomona, and CSU Chico. I wanted to be in more of the SoCal area, so that's why predominantly of my university or the universities i applied to are in southern california and i also wanted to see if i wanted to be close to home so i picked two which are in the central valley and then one is in northern california which is a big reach for me but i really like the vibe of that school. i really like the vibe of chico and i really like the experience that a lot of my friends are having so I just wanted to keep an open mind to it. There are some main differences of high school and community college. A main one is that you get to choose your own schedule, which is very good. Yeah, it could be a dangerous place some game sometimes because you get to pick your own schedule, but then you also have to work on your procrastination and staying on top of the homework and the classes. Although you could skip them, um, some do have really strict attendance attendance policies. Another one would be is that the classes are a quicker pace just because they want you to learn as much information you can. Well, as much information they can teach you and so you could digest it in a good way where you're actually able to learn about it and they could further your education. And a last one, the professors be... are also very understanding and they could be really nice if you interact with them as much as they interact with you. Although some professors are a little mean, I'm not going to lie, but a lot mm -hmm. of them are very understanding and they're very nice and they're open to have conversations with you, which is sometimes I feel like a little bit different from high school because I know a lot of high school teachers tend to say that college professors are very rude or not very rude, but they're not as lenient as they would be, but they actually are and they're very nice and you have to remember that they are also human beings, so they will have their days that they're not very feeling well and you just got to tough it up sometimes but most of the times they're going to be very nice and the classrooms their classes are going to be very fun thank you rosie thank you for your video we we have her live um during the q a and so we're we're right on time here so remember um educators if you could put the name of your school and your how many students you have in the Q and A, not in the panel. So next, we we travel across the country to Harvard University and Julia Casas. Hi, my name is Julia Casas, and welcome to Harvard. to Harvard, I definitely experienced homesickness. This was largely in part due to the fact that my freshman year at college was virtual. So I got to live in a dorm, but I didn't actually attend classes in person. 
And I think the best way that I coped with that was by reaching out to people who either lived in my building or through Instagram or um, through text. And we met up and we would eat meals together and that's how I met some of my best friends today. I would say the best tips I have for creating a great work-life balance is to use Google Calendar or some planner of sorts and then also to make sure you dedicate enough time in your day to sleep and also to exercise and eat meals. However you're feeling, you're going to need to be replenished with sleep and you're going to need to look after your body now that you're away from home and someone's not reminding you to do that for yourself. So definitely integrate those um, healthy aspects of your daily routine into your um, daily schedule and just dedicate time to that in addition to your classes and that sort of thing. My day-to-day -day life at Harvard is very different than what it was in high school. So usually I start my mornings around 8 a.m. I go to 9 a.m. classes and I'm usually in class until 3 or 4. And then I go to lab and do research. Um, and then usually I'll have some kind of extracurricular activity in the evenings followed by homework. And then interspersed throughout my day is meal time with friends and I love to make time to see people I haven't seen in a long time um, and share a meal. So it's definitely different than what it was in high school, but it is also tremendously better and more fulfilling. The best way to avoid feeling overwhelmed and stressed by a busy schedule or a busy work week is to plan ahead. So utilizing your Google Calendar and really just planning ahead for the upcoming week and making sure you list out exactly what assignments you have to, um, any other deadlines, upcoming exams, quizzes, and then also taking into account how much sleep you're gonna need certain days, when you're gonna be going to bed, when you're gonna be waking up, etc. For me, the best strategy I have learned for test taking, but also note taking, is to start early. So if you know you have a big exam coming up in two weeks, I typically like to start studying at the very minimum a week or a week and a half before my exam so that I don't have to cram the night or two nights before this big test. And so I can ensure that I get enough sleep and I'm taking care of myself those few days before that exam. In addition to test taking, when it comes to taking notes in courses in my sections, I always like to make sure I have a charged device, so whether that's my computer or uh, a tablet of sorts, or at the very least, a notebook or um, pieces of paper where I can take notes. And I always like to look over my notes at the end of my day to just kind of review what I learned and also just to kind of fully grasp the concepts, whether they're very abstract or whether they're, you know, like smaller, um, chemistry, biology principles that I just need to memorize. In my opinion, one of the best things about Harvard is the financial aid. Because it is a private institution, a lot of the aid that students receive comes from the major benefactors and alumni of Harvard University. So I'm a recipient of the Harvard Faculty Scholarship, which means that every year, most of my tuition is paid for by the alumni network. At Harvard, the main mental health resource center is called CAMS, which stands for Counseling and Mental Health Services. So CAMS is basically the main resource of therapy and also um, prescription for undergraduate students. They also refer students to outside counselors after a, a certain number of sessions with um, a therapist that is licensed um, and provided for free through Harvard um, to all undergraduates who seek such services. Now, Julia graduated from Puente, graduated from Whittier High School, is in Paris, France right now, study abroad. So she won't be on the panel, but if you have questions, thank you, juniors, for uh, taking notes and 
being involved in the Q&A. Um, so we're gonna switch, go straight to here in California, up north uh, to, for us in the SoCal and oh, neighbors to you people in the north, UC Davis. Hi everyone, my name is Valerie Cervantes and I will be taking you guys through my UC Davis experience. The UC Davis community is very friendly, very nice, and everybody's just very helpful when it comes to doing things that are professionally, academically, or just learning how to socialize. I think that UC Davis is a good place to get out of your shell and your comfort zone and do new things. Um, one thing that is very good about our campus is that we have a lot of festivals. So we have the Sunset Fest, we have the Whole Earth Festival, and one of our biggest things is Picnic Day. At UC Davis, we have a quarter system, so that means you have 10 weeks worth of lecture and one week for finals. It can be very tough for a lot of students, especially since everything is very fast paced. You start with the first week and that's basically introductions. You get into week two through eight, you're doing a lot of readings, a lot of writing, a lot of projects, and you have midterms sometimes more than once for each class. During that final week, you feel like everything's going by so fast. So I would say the quarter system is a little bit hard for most people, but once you get the hang of it, you really learn how to manage your time and do things. Although there's a lot of reasons for students to choose their college campuses, I would say I chose UC Davis for three reasons. The first one is environment. UC Davis has a very nature-like environment where you could just go outside and study on the grass or on a bench or maybe even in the arboretum. You could see squirrels, you can see ducks, and you can even see the cows on campus. So I really like that. The second thing is location. UC Davis is close to Sacramento and San Francisco, maybe even Lake Tahoe. So I would recommend going to those places on your free time, obviously when you're not studying. And the last thing I would say is financial aid. UC Davis offered me the best plan and it usually does that for a really good plan for most students. So those are three reasons. One of my favorite things about the UC experience is being able to meet students from other campuses. You can do this through things like conferences, programs such as the study abroad or the UC Sacramento program, and also by going to sports games where you have your rival schools. Another thing that I would like to mention is that UCs are known for their research. We have professors that are more than willing to help students engage in research opportunities, which can also help students expand their social networks. UCs also provide internship and career fairs that help students network and outreach with companies so that they can get a job after graduation. UC Davis has so many resources for its students. The first thing is getting a ride on the Unitrans buses. You can get a free bus ride by just showing your student ID. The second thing is that we have over 800 clubs on campus. Since there are so many, you can find one that could easily fit with your student schedule. We have things from video games to sports and even honors clubs. The last thing I would like to mention is that we have a lot of centers on campus that will help with mental health, financial help, and also academic help. Some of them are the EOP Center, the AB 540 Center, and we have tutoring centers as well.
Thank you, Valerie. Uh, Valerie is from UC Davis and another student that they're with, they're in finals right now, so they're not with us, but um, she is a Point Tape Club president. Um, and don't you love the close up of the ducks and the cow and everything? Anyway, so juniors, I hope you're taking notes when we, we have one more video to go. We're totally on uh, schedule. And remember, teachers, if you could put uh, or counselors, in the Q and A, the uh, your school and the number of students that you have, juniors you have with you. So let's hear from East Bay. I'm Ian Rama, biochemistry major and the first year student at CSU East Bay. I am the chairman of Puente Club. I'd say one advice for incoming college students is to. Surround yourself with a bunch of people who can help you study, find a study group, or help you grow your network. And networking is a very a special skill. Hi everyone, my name is Abraham Medina and I'm a double major um, in criminal justice and sociology. I'm a fourth year here at Cal State East Bay. And I want to talk to you about what it's like coming to CSU East Bay and just CSU in general and campus life as a whole. Um, so in my experience, I am from Southern California and I moved up here to the Bay Area to come to Cal State East Bay. Um, it was such a very different environment change. Um, I didn't know anyone when I came up here. And I feel like definitely East Bay did not let me down. Like the campus life here is amazing and I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, so something I feel like is really important um, when you do come to a CSU or just any, um, just university in general is being really involved. And by that, I, do, I mean like, just getting involved in clubs and organizations. Um, for myself, like I mentioned, I didn't really know anyone coming up here. So I joined Greek Life. I am a brother of Alpha Phi Omega. Um, and it was honestly the best decision I ever made just because I was able to find my family and my people here um, for like whenever I just, um, you just need a community here, need um, to be able to thrive while you are on campus um, and that doesn't mean like you have to join Greek life or a fraternity or sorority you can join a club or I know something I'm also well acquainted with the affinity centers I currently work at the undocumented student resource center and a lot of CSUs um, the CSU system as a whole is trying to be more inclusive with all this um, different cultures and ethnicities and just have welcoming spaces for everyone to feel welcome so um at least for east bay we have four of the centers we have the undocumented center the black center the asian pacific islander center and the latinx center um so you coming to these spaces is just like a meeting people that are similar to us similar um in status or in ethnic or um race um, really helps build that community that I was mentioning earlier. So just overall, I would say getting involved is super important on um, when you come into campus. Um, however you choose to get involved, that is completely up to you. Um, but just I do highly recommend getting involved. Thank you. And have a nice day. Hi, my name is Litsi. I'm a third year student here at Cal State East Bay majoring in biochemistry. Something I wish I knew when I was a freshman were that we as students have various opportunities to connect with faculty members and our professors. Um, I wish I knew more about the resources that are available to us, like various tutoring services. Um, and I also wish I knew more about office hours because office hours are a really great way to communicate with your professor as well as build relationships with them that can later get you um, internships or even research opportunities. Hey, my name is Brian Lopez. I'm a first year at Cal State East Bay University, majoring in construction management. Um, I want to address the fact that I know a lot of people have a fear of like going into a higher education institution. I know myself, I felt that fear and I wasn't always sure if this was the right path to go down. And I had a lot of doubt in myself. After a first semester, I feel that I have the confidence and the experience to know that I'm able to do this because I'm utilizing my resources and I'm, being, I'm reaching out to my peers whenever I have questions. 
I will say that that's the way you get the most out of this experience. Um, you will be lost sometimes, you will have difficult times, but it is possible, especially as a first generation student. I want to encourage you to go wherever you go. It doesn't matter if you go to a UC or a CSU, just make sure that you're always on top of your deadlines and make sure that you network because networking is the best thing that you can do, not only for your years in your university, but also ahead of that, you can have make friends that can help you out in the future. And so always make sure that you network and utilize all your resources and you're able to make it. So believe in yourself. Wonderful. We have Brian here uh, with us too on the panel and we're ready to, to go on that in a sec. But before we start that, we're relatively on time. Um, I want to say once again, please put the name of your school and how many students in the Q&A. We have Centennial with 45. We have Everett Alvarez, which is the, uh, the school, the uh, school of Valerie Cervantes. We have Rancho Verde with 25, Everett ha has 25, Marshall has 25, Pittsburgh 43, Castro Valley 15, uh, Pioneer 35, uh, wonderful. So now we're gonna transition and either you could go um, put it in the chat, the name of the student in school that ans asking the question or, um, or uh, I, I don't think we could go live, uh, right, Anna? Um, or, but in the meantime, what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to ask here for Rosie to ask answer a question of what what it was like her community college um, experience with Puente. So how was the Puente experience in community college? Rosie. Hi, so for me, the Puente Community College experience was really, it was really helpful to me, especially since we had a counselor and she did a lot of the heavy work for us when creating our schedule. And it really took a lot of time and effort, I guess, in creating my schedule off of me because she already knew what pathway to take and if I didn't really like that pathway then she would create another pathway and the classes were really good and she she knew a lot of the teachers already so she knew who to recommend who not to recommend and it was just a really fun experience and a good way to go into community college especially since the transition from high school to community college is a little bit difficult with the classes and with not really knowing anyone, uh, because a lot of my friends did go somewhere else. So I was really alone. And I met people in the Puente class that I really like, and I'm still friends with them. And I wouldn't have wanted it to be another way. And that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm sorry, just to clear up the confusion. If you have any questions, put it in the q and a not in the chat because the chat is disabled sorry about that but we have we have some questions while we're waiting so if you could put uh the name of the school the student in the q and a if you have any questions for our panelists i'll go with brian next we have a, a practice question here or that when he said and brian uh his question that he thought that you'd want to know, how did you navigate the financial aspect of higher ed? Ivan, uh, also, Ivan, if you remember to put on your camera, thank you. Yeah, so um, I am an AB 540 student, which means I am undocumented. And so that just uh, complicates the situation a bit because, you know, uh, the process is different. But I had my point that counselor, Ms. Torres, guide me through the process, and she sat there with me. You know, it was uh, a lot of work, but it was worth it at the end. I didn't get all the I didn't get all the financial aid that I needed to cover like every expense. Um, I still had to pay out of pocket for for my tuition, but um, this was before I started school. So then over the summer and even like before the fall, I was able to like get a scholarship. So oh, a combination of 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 scholarships from East Bay and also a combination of private scholarships, and so I was able to actually secure more money than I needed to, for tuition. And so that's actually really. Oh, my bad. No one told me that you were like able to get paid to go to school, which is the situation that I'm in right now. Um, I'm actually like getting paid to go to school because I, I get more than what I need. 
And so I think I'm at a really comfortable spot in, in terms of that. And as an AB 540 student, I was able to secure like this much funding because of my volunteer work, because of my grades. So I really encourage you guys to like volunteer as much as you can. You'll meet people there that might also give scholarships, which is a situation I found myself in. Um, I was volunteering at, at this, um, this place. And then the person that I met there was actually someone who gave out scholarships and that really helped me out. And, you know, it just helps me to focus on school and I have to worry about the job aspect as much. Thank you, Brian. Uh, if you, if you um, and Ivan, if you could put in a, a question that you would like to answer in the chat, the chat is working for you. But students, uh, Pontices, if you could introduce yourselves again, Rosie, if you could start off and uh, what school you're going to, just start off again and then we'll go to Brian and Ivan. Yeah, um, so I'm Rosara Olacio. Um, I go by Rosie sometimes and I am a sophomore at College of the Sequoias, which is a community college, and I'm a psychology major. I'm getting ready to transfer for fall 2023. Hey y'all, my name is Brian. I'm an alumni from Newark Mort High School. I'm currently at CSU East Bay, majoring in construction management. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Ivan Cuellar. I'm a first year at Cal State East Bay and I'm a business major. So we have a question, Ivan said, is it okay to change your major? Uh, go ahead, what do you, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, so when I was in high school, uh, I wasn't necessarily scared about going into college, but more about knowing what I wanted to study. Uh, being first gen and in my household, my parents kind of wanted me to decide like what I wanted to study and like keep on pursuing that. But being in college now, I realize that it's okay to change your major because you might not really be into what it is you're studying. And it's okay to change it before you go into your third year because that gives you plenty of time to you know, explore and make sure you're studying what you want to study. Thank you, Ivan. Yeah, so it's okay to change your major. Hey, we're, we're talking to almost 350 students statewide. Uh, and a lot of uh, Puentices will be watching this on panel. Any questions? One last chance for any questions from students in the Q&A. One last chance. Let me look at it here. Any, any questions from students in the Q&A, Puentices out there? So I have one last question from them. If you could think back when you were juniors, they're juniors second semester right now. What advice would you give them? Rosie. Um, one advice that I would give juniors now is to definitely appreciate the high school life and to volunteer and just be involved in your community just because you never know. Or if you do move, you're going to miss it. Um, I have yet to transfer, but I know when I leave, I'm going to miss my community and I'm going to miss the food and just everything about it. So I would say to get involved and to volunteer and just to be with your family. Great. You know, hey, I have uh, three questions, one from uh, Castro Valley. Uh, one of you, um, if you could talk about the sports at your school, at Anybody have any opinions on us, the sports on the campus? Uh-oh, <laughs> not a big sports thing. I could talk about it, about the community college. Go for um, it. So at my school, we do have a lot of sports options. We have um, basically the basic sports like football, soccer, basketball, um, volleyball, tennis, from what I know. And I know you have to try out and sometimes they do like seek out and go to high schools to um, like pick out the players, I guess, that they want. Um, but I do know that they offer some sort of scholarships for athletes and they do. And my school does prioritize athletes. Um, I think that's really about it. That's all I know. Thank you, Rosie. OK, uh, Brian, can you answer this question? Um, how did Twente in high school prepare you for college? Okay, so we did a lot of writing in high school. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that was actually very helpful. And also just uh, like the idea that you're going to go to college because we took a lot of like trips to uh, one of them was SoCal uh, with Sacramento State. 
and even like around we took a lot of like different trips to different campuses and so they really embedded the idea that you know you got to try at least to get somewhere um, whether that be a community college a csc or a uc but having that idea there and also um you know like networking uh, being active in the community we had a lot of events like um the other los muertos and you know we had a, a newark parade because i'm from newark so you know you got to participate in all these different events and so you're you're really engaged with your community and that helps out a lot because you uplift each other and you, you learn a lot about like volunteerism also and, and the importance of that and being active um being like leadership skills you know learning how to work with people so that's how it prepared me for for college Thank you, Brian. Um, I, I, Ivan, you're not in your dorm room, right? You're at home, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm at home. I don't have a dorm. Okay. <laughs> Somebody wanted to grab a tour of your dorm room. Uh, I want to give one more shout out here to Brian. Um, he is president of the Puente Club, and we created 12 Puente Clubs throughout the state, and Brian is the first one to make it an official. So can everybody please give you a round of applause or an emoji or something for a the students that gave their time this morning uh thank you so much every uh you three thank you so much for being part of this uh, and, uh, mr gonzalez before we okay. start i wanted to say something that's very important in terms of admissions our our juniors will be applying next year for um for the colleges and universities and one of the things that is very very important that they forget to do oftentimes is to include Puente and their personal statements. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have particularly with the University of California system, uh, the admissions officers um, really look at the Puente experience because it's a University of California program. So as you are already anticipating and thinking about what you're going to put in those personal statements, make sure, make sure, make sure that you add that you are a Puentista and how Puente has really supported you in your leadership development. Um, and uh, so make sure that you tie that in into your personal statements. Thank you, Ms. Canchola. All right, let's give it up for our panelists. Any kind of emoji out there would help? Counselors? Wait, I'm gonna give some, I gotta give some emoji, right? Can you do one? I don't know if you can. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, panelists. Um, um, and, um, We'll see you. And if we could go, Miss Bach, to the uh, Metameter and the exit ticket, I'd appreciate. It. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Brian. So, um, how do we work this again, Miss Bach? They just take a picture of it. Students can use their phones to. Um access this QR code and submit a word about how you feel about the college application process. Hopefully, I know this was quick, and it, it, but at least it gave you some idea. So if you could just think about just one word of how you're feeling about the application process after today. Um, this is something we used to take students to a campus and we would segregate them into community college into into but i think it's better that we you see all the options open for you because who knows you know you could you know end up to go into a harvard or to um yeah use code 519888 and then the last one just share a word um are those the words we're getting yep Oh, wonderful. Okay. Oh, cool. Overwhelmed, stressed, oh, excited, yeah. nervous, stressed. <laughs> Remember, you know, and we got a shout out from Brian for your counselor out there. And I know a lot of counselors are, are with us and how important they are in that senior year. They're just so, so important. So, um, you know, let's give it up for them. And you know, um, thank you for putting that down, everybody. Mr. Gonzalez, uh, may, may I add a few words? Yes. A lot Please. of these words yes. are very heavy. Uh, you know, things like overwhelmed, mm -hmm. anxious, nervous, stressed, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of pressure, and um, so. Please know that this is very natural. These feelings are very mm -hmm. natural. 
you know, they're, they're part of the process. Uh, we know that there is a, a lot of nervousness behind, you know, applying to colleges and universities. But the thing is that if you don't apply, you'll never know if you get accepted. Right. right? And so take that perspective, use this, this, these little, um, you know, nerves to, uh, on a positive way, you know, to try to refocus all of that energy that you're feeling. Yeah. And I saw in there an inspired and good advice. So that's two. And is he confused? Okay, we have two more minutes. If we could go to the last exercise and we'll be done for the day. Um, or is that the last one? That's the last one. Oh, complete the exit ticket for a chance to receive a gift from Puente Statewide Office. So please do that. And um, I really, really, really appreciate all of you that came in today. Uh, remember to put in the q a if you're a school for anybody i just saw somebody from catella thank you miss coyar uh, for saying it uh, nancy gonzalez for making a comment thank you everybody thank you myra thank you brian um so thank you all for everything i know this was really quick but um Hopefully you have a good day. I see Miss uh, Miss Munger in there from Catella. I don't know if you have any students with you or you're just watching it live, but um, we'll be sending out this recording for your students. And so there's the exit ticket that we were putting. If you students, if you could do that, and we we wish you a great day and a great weekend. Down here in South, we're going to be seeing all the freshmen at their student leadership conference tomorrow. So um, it was great to see, you know, so many juniors coming through today. So uh, have a wonderful day. And um, thank you very much for coming.